Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. I'm not going to beat around the bush here today. It's 20 degrees outside here in Denver. Uh, with the wind, not including the wind chill factor, it's freezing outside, freezing. So we're doing the video in the car today. For those of you who do not know me, uh, allow me to br briefly introduce myself. You know, my name is Sean Elvis. Um, I know I haven't done a video for a while. So for those of you who have been with me, welcome back. Um, I got some more knowledge to share with you guys. And for those of you who are new to the channel, you know, you don't know me, uh, let me tell you what time it is. You know, on my channel, uh, I'm going to preach to you the Word of God. You know, I'm going to preach to you the Bible. Um, you're going to hear the truth on this channel. For those of you who don't believe the Bible, you know, who reject the Bible, who say that, you know, there is no God, whatever, um, you're welcome to exit now. You know, um, you could take your blue pills and you could walk out the door, right? Because on my channel, you're going to hear the truth, all right? Now, this is not my truth. You know, this is not my truth. I'm not going to preach to you something I made up. I'm going to preach to you something that's been around for thousands of years in the Bible. You know, it comes from the Word of God. So with that being said, I'm going to get on with my message, all right? Um, I'm going to start today by comparing cats and dogs, Okay. You know, you know, dogs are seen as man's best friend, right? You know, they get along with everybody mo most of the time, you know, mostly everybody. Um, dogs are generally uh, work good with other dogs, you know. I mean, there are certain breeds that won't go with each other, but that's whatever, you know. And in, in, and in wild form, you know, in the, the, you know, like when we're talking about wolves, which come from the same family, um, they hunt in packs, right? And we can see that there's a difference between cats and dogs. You know, cats, you know, who, who's the top cat? You know, the top cat is the lion, right? The king of the jungle. You know what I'm saying? Cats are more independent. You know, they come and go as they please. They don't mind being alone. Um, they don't necessarily hunt in packs. You know, they hunt on their own. They, they pounce on their prey. And a lot of the times, you know, women are compared to like cats and men are compared to dogs. You know what I mean? Like. Like you say, like women are, you know, they could be cold, they could be distant. You have to earn your affection, earn their affection and things like that, right? You know, they, they don't sell out the way dogs do, right? You heard that joke. Anyways, you know, um, and a lot of the times, you know, men are compared to dogs. You know, you heard that old saying, like, all men are dogs, right? Like, they just want one thing. And, and you know, yeah, you know, there's some good things about dogs. You know, like they're loyal and they're man's best friend, right? But, you know, what I'm going to propose to you in this video is that it's the complete opposite. It's the complete opposite. You know, the way I see it and the way I'm going to explain it is, you know, women are more like, like cats. Or, excuse me, women are more like dogs. I'm sorry. Women are more like dogs and, and men are more like cats. And, excuse me, um, allow me to explain why. You know, I have some reasonings here. You know, because... Here's why. You know, women are, are group oriented. You know, you're rarely, rarely, if ever, you're going to find a woman um, out there doing her own thing all by herself. Right. You know, she's always in a group or she's always got a friend with her or somebody, you know, because women feel comfortable in a group. Why? Because women are weaker. You know, they're more vulnerable to being attacked, you know. Um, so they need that group dynamic, kind of like a dog. Right. You know, where guys, guys are more like cats. You know, we're independent. We come and go as we please. You know, we don't need that security blanket like a woman, right? See, a woman, she needs like a security blanket. She needs to fit in with the group, right? Um, us guys, you know, we, we feel like we could just make it on our own. You know, we're tough enough. We're strong enough. I don't need nobody else. I could I could hunt on my own. I could do it on my own. Or, you know, at least at least we... We think we do, whether we can or not. But my point here is this. My, here's my point, guys. A woman's weakness is her fear of being alone. You know, she needs that group to protect her because because she's physically weak. You know, she could be overpowered by a man. So she fears not having that group there to uh, give her back up to protect her. You know, she's vulnerable when she's on her own. And so, she, so she'll do 
things that aren't right, you know, in order to fit in with the group. You know, she'll she'll bend the truth. She'll lie. She'll um, become something that she doesn't want to be. Um, she'll say things that, you know, whatever, you know, like, and, and it's all geared towards she needs to fit in with the group because um, for her own protection, you know what I'm saying? That's why it's important to her. And, you know, I'm not blaming her because, you know, uh, guys, you know, we could do the same thing. We could do the same thing um, in a different way, you know, because we value our independence. We value our strength. But, but you know, um, I'm, I'm going to focus here on the women, you know, because it, it's a mistake that I made with the woman that I was with, you know. You know, I thought, you know, I could take care of you. I could provide for you. And, you know, I showed her. I bought her things. I took care of her as best as I could. And, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's what us guys do. You know, we want to show women, hey, you know, we're strong. We, you know, we could do this for you. We could do that for you. We could take care of you. Um, and we could provide for you and all that. And we, and we expect like, okay, she'll come with me because she'll see like I could take care of her, right? But you see, that's, that's not exactly how it works, right? She, you know, because women, they need that group. Remember, uh, they, they, they need a group to be to be a part of. They don't think like we think. We think independently. Like, oh, we're just gonna we're just gonna ride off on the sunset together. And you know, that's not that's generally not how it works because they need that group. You know, in, in, unless like you're rich and you're powerful and you have a kingdom that you could provide everything for the woman. You know, she she's gonna want a group. She's gonna need a group because she's gonna think to herself, you know, what hap- What if something happens to you? You know, how am I going to make it on my own, right? You know, so she needs, she needs to have a group. And, um, you know, so sometimes she might come to you, but, but she won't stay. You know what I mean? Um, but seriously, like, <laughs> the, the reason a lot of us guys are failing with women, you know, the, it's not because we're bad guys. It's not because... Uh, we can't provide for them and things like that. The reason is that, you know, because there's a lot of bad women out there, right? We can see it, you know. They're they're just women that, you know, we really are starting to be like, you know, I don't even want to be with you, right? Like, you actually, you're going to hurt my progress in life rather than help me. And the reason us guys are failing is is because of us men, You know, and I I know, I know you're saying, what, Sean, what are you talking about? We've heard this story over and over and over again. There you go, blaming us men again, Sean. Like, we've already heard that nonsense, bro. Like, we've already heard you need to man up. You need to become a better man. Um, But listen up. See, I'm, I'm not saying you need to become a better man individually. I'm saying we need to become better men uh, what's the word, not individually, but as a group, you know, as a, as a pack, if you will, because, you know, let me tell you something, when I was younger, because right now, I'm in my early 30s, and, you know, when I was growing up, I used to watch this show, right, this show called The Power Rangers, you know, maybe you heard of it, but, you know, these guys, they were good, they were strong, you know, they could beat people up, they were good fighters for good, for, for justice, and, they were strong individual fighters, right? But, you know, it wasn't until they came upon, like, the evil boss, right? The evil boss that they were no match on a one-on-one fight with the evil boss. Every single one of them would have got their butt kicked, right? So they had to come together and as a group. And they had to form, like, like Voltron. You know, I, I, don't, I forgot what, uh, what they used to... Um, call it or whatever but you know they used to say mighty morphin power rangers and they would morph into like this super ultra power ranger right where they'd all come together and stuff and you know so what what i'm telling you is when they combine their powers then they could defeat the evil boss you know what i'm saying so what i'm telling you guys is if you're not a part of a church if you're not a part of a group of men um and let me define church real quick. I want to define church so you know what I'm saying, you know. A lot of people think of church as like a building or something like It's not a building. Uh, what a church means is it just means a group of men. 
a group of men who are like-minded, who are um, help, willing to help each other out, you know, when time gets tough, you know, who, who have each other's backs, um, who collectively hold each other accountable for doing what's right. And, and most importantly, you know, a church is uh, the group of men who follow the Bible. You know, they hold the Bible in, in high esteem and they strive to do what's right in accordance with Scripture, you know. So if you don't have this group, if you don't have a church, you know, where, where men come together, where men run the show, excuse me, where men are in charge and they're holding each other in check, right, to do what's right then you're not going to defeat the evil boss, right? Which is Satan, right? Satan's the evil boss that we're all up against. It's not women, it's Satan. It's the devil. You know, both men and women are trying to fight him off. And, you know, without this group, without this church, we can't fight him off, you know? Because the devil, the Bible says the devil is, is lurking about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, right? So he's just... He's just itching to get all of us, right? Get all of us in trouble with God. Get all of us to turn away from God. And, you know, we don't really stand a chance alone versus Satan, you know. And and it's not because you're not a strong guy. You know, it's not because something's wrong with you or you're not faithful or you're not saved. You don't believe in Jesus. But, you know, because when we're working together as a team, we're a lot stronger because just like the Power Rangers, you know, we all bring our talents and our abilities uh, together and we form up a church and we become strong. You know what I mean? We're so much stronger as a group. And when us uh, and when good God fearing men come together, you know, and we do the right thing and we follow the Bible, you know, that's when good women will show up. That's when the good women will show up and say, hey, I want to be a part of this group. Why? Because. Women need a group, and, and, and they get the security. They get the security from the group of men, right? Because individually they're saying, hey, look, I, that's too much of a risk for me to depend on one man. But if there's a group of men, you know, if there's a few good guys doing the right thing, then they could depend, then they could take a shot. You know, that's why, you know, traditionally you got married in the church. Because the women, they needed that security, right? Now, you know, the whores we're getting out of our society are obviously a result of these um, bad groups of men, right? There's a lot of bad groups of men who are creating whores. Um, Now, let me give you a quick example. You know, like Adam and Eve, Eve came from Adam's rib, right? So women basically come from whatever group of men there are. So if you have a bad group of men you're going to get a bad group of women. And if you have a good group of men, guess what you're going to get? A good group of women because Eve comes from Adam. Eve comes from Adam's rib. She's going to go along with whatever Adam's doing. So if we get a good group of men, right? And that, and that's why there's a lot of good men out there who 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 can't uh keep their woman in check you know i remember i fell into that category and i was like what the heck is going on here i'm a good guy and it's because you don't have a group of men backing you up you don't have a church of men you know what i mean so what i'm saying is what the world lacks nowadays is good churches a good group of men who band together to do what's right you know if you have a good group of men who follow the bible obeying the commandments you know i'm telling you i'm pro- i promise you good women will show up they will show up. And, you know, they might be bad women before they show up, but that's what the group of men's there for, is to straighten them out and say, hey, look, we, we don't accept this. You know, we, do, we will not accept this. You will be kicked out of our group if you do not follow these rules. And the Bible spells out all the rules there for us, right? Um, you know, and the old saying goes, like, if you build it, they will come. If you build that good church... That's that's built on the foundation of the Bible and Jesus Christ. They will come, you know. But if you just quit and you throw up your hands and say, ah, forget it, you know, to hell with it. You know, the women are bad. Um, they're following the devil. So, you know, I'm just going to run off and do my own thing. And, and, and who cares? It really doesn't matter because 
because you know all these guys are like i see all these MGTOW guys you know they're giving up they're like forget it man you can't change them so just join them right if you can't beat them join them right no that's that's not me that's not me i'm gonna do the right thing until i take my last breath whether whether whatever happens i'm gonna do the right thing excuse me but um anyways you know that's my message for the day guys you know um, it's not a long message. I don't want it to drag on and on. Uh, but, but I did want to put this video out cause it's important, you know, so what you guys need to do, whatever, whatever stage you're at, go out there and sharpen your skills, pick up your Bible, start reading it, start studying it, start doing the right thing. No matter what everybody else is doing around you, no matter what else you hear other people doing, you read that Bible for yourself. You find out what's right and wrong and you do it, you know? And, and here's the thing. A lot of guys are saying, well, look, like, there's no good churches out there. What am I going to do? Like, look, if, if you don't think there's any good churches out there and you're reading your Bible and you're doing the right thing and you're a good man, then guess what that makes you? You're the leader. You need to lead the church. You need to go out there and, and recruit other men and start discipling them. You know? If, if you're looking around and saying, hey, none of... None of these guys got it right, you know? Like, none of these churches are worth a darn. Then you're the leader. Go start your own church. You have that authority to do that. And you start getting a group of men going, right? That's what you got to do. Because we need to band together. We need to form good churches of good men who are standing against um, this wickedness in this society, right? Um, anyway, you know... Because right now, what we have in our society is women don't have an incentive. Remember, they need that group, and they and they don't see any good groups of men out there doing anything, right? They just see a bunch of lazy men who just want to sit on their high horse and, and get paid and not do any work, not do the right thing. You know, they just want to be powerful or, or whatever, right? They just want to run the show, right? It's not about running the show. It's about doing the right thing. And the Bible says... Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. In other words, the Bible is saying, hey, look, don't start the church because you want a woman. Don't start the church because you want power. You start the church for the sake of just doing the right thing. If you're in it for the right reasons, just to do the right thing and do God's work, God will build the church. God will make it happen. You know, you have to give women that incentive to do good. Right now, women have no incentive. Women have no incentive to do good, you know? And, you know, they're not going to set up the group. They're not going to lead the group. Women can't lead the church, you know? Men have to do it. We have to be the leaders. So we need to step up because women aren't going to step out on their own and, and, and build the church. That's never going to happen. So um, right now we, we have as a bunch of women stuck with evil groups of men, right? Men who are abusing them. And, you know, it saddens my heart because I couldn't protect the woman that I love. I couldn't get her out of way, get her away from that group. And, and you know, it, and, you know, I own up to that, you know, because I was trying to do it on my own. And granted, granted, you know, I was trying to find the group and I was trying to do the right thing. Right. I had my heart in the right place. I just didn't couldn't find the backup of men. Right. And and the Bible says, you know, if you. If, Christ died for the church, right? He died for the church. And, and if we're trying to go up against this evil boss, Satan, we need to band together, right? Because let me tell you something. Over and over and over the Bible, men fail. You know, they fail. But you know what separates a man of God, a godly man, a holy man from a wicked, evil man? Is that the godly man refuses to quit. You know, the devil knocks him down and he, and he gets back up and he refuses to quit because he knows the only way, only way that you could fail is to quit. So when the devil knocks you down, guys, just get back up. Keep reading your Bible. Keep doing the right thing, you know. If you do the wrong thing, hey, confess it to God and get it right and change your ways, you know. The Bible says repent. God will, God will forgive you your sins, you know. And guys, let me tell you something, you know, we could have the best guys join our church, the best guys, you know, we can get the top guys out of the whole world and we still won't defeat the devil. The devil cannot be defeated. 
Not until Jesus Christ comes back will Jesus Christ defeat the devil. But what we could do is we could stand against him. We could stand. We could stand tall, stand firm against him until Jesus comes back. And that's the whole meaning of the church. When, when the Bible says Christ died for the church, that's what he meant. It's not that we're going to defeat the devil. But we could at least stand against him so he can't knock us down. You know what I'm saying? And anyway, that's my message, guys. Um, you guys have a great day. I don't want to make this message too long. So uh, God bless you guys. And as usual, I'm going to give God the last word. You guys have a good day. God bless. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 19. These are Jesus' words. Well, let me read it. When Jesus came into the coast of Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say Elias, and others Jeremiah, one of the, or one of the prophets. And Jesus said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the, king, the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The word of the Lord. Amen.